How do you fix a losing trade? There's three ways that you can do this, and we're going to examine them here in this video. So let's just jump right into it. By the way, my name is Nick. I've been a Forex trader and trading for about six and a half years, four and a half years profitably. I run a coaching program called Mission FX where I teach people how to trade. It comes with one on one mentorship, all sorts of stuff. There will be links in the description for information on that. But you're here to learn how to fix a losing trade. So let's learn. So I've just scrolled back to a random point here on this chart. And we're here September 1st, so about a week ago from the time that I'm making this video. And we're on, what's this, USTJPY, so a Forex pair. So let's, uh, let's first examine what does it mean by fixing a losing trade? Well, most people would probably think that fixing a losing trade means to just lessen the loss somehow. If you can lessen the loss and make it a smaller loss than it was, or if you can make it a break even, or if um, you could even turn it into a winner, anything except what the current loss is essentially. So that's what it means to fix a losing trade. It's just to lessen the loss. So there are a lot of times in trading, if you are trading spot Forex on margin, where you can exit a position at break even or even a profit, even if you were completely wrong about the move, even if you entered a trade and you were wrong immediately. Now, obviously, when we enter a trade and we're right, the market moves into profit, right? So it's not OK. That happens maybe half the time. Great. Awesome. You close in profit. It was a good trade. The other half the time you enter a trade and then it goes into drawdown and you're faced with the decision. Do I close? Do I add to the position? Do I hedge? What do I do? So we'll be looking at three ways that you can manage losing positions. The first one is that you can just close the position at a loss. You enter the trade, it starts to lose. You can just close it at a loss, Okay, whatever. Second way is you can hedge. You can enter an equal and opposite position. And we'll talk about this more in the video. And the third thing that you can do is you can wait for the next trading opportunity to scale in, to add to a losing position. And before we jump here into an example, let's talk about adding to losing and winning positions for a second, because I'm sure that you've heard all over the internet, it is a horrible idea to add to losing positions and that it's a great idea to add to winning positions. But the weird part that no one talks about is that if you add to losing positions at an area where you think price is going to bounce anyway, it doesn't really matter if you're adding to a losing position because your your second position is based on its own merit and its own reasons. And you're essentially averaging down on a trade that you still think is likely to work out. You're improving your cost basis and everything. So in certain contexts, it's not a horrible idea to add to a losing position. In other contexts, it's a bad idea to add to a losing position, but of course it all depends on the nuance and circumstances and context of the particular environment in which you're trading in on the charts. Now, second thing is adding to a winning position. It's always great. It's butterflies and roses. It's fine and dandy. That's what you should be doing because that's what the pros are doing, right? It's not always the case. When you're adding to a winning position, you're making your cost basis worse than it was whenever you first entered the trade. If you have entered a trade and then price goes up into profit 100 pips, then you add a second position, you're essentially making your cost basis worse by 50 pips. It's dragging your cost basis up 50 pips. So your break even point, if price only pulls back 50 pips, that's where your break even point is. And God forbid it pulls back even further because then you're going to be in a net loss. The more you add to your positions, the closer you get to the target, the more risk you assume within a winning position that you're adding to. So the simple takeaway here between adding to losing positions and winning positions is that both of them work and both of them are okay. You have to just think outside the box. You cannot think in a black and white box in which you that's just nope. Adding to a losing position is bad and adding to a winning position is good because it's just not always the case that either of those statements are true. It really just depends on the specificities and the context of the specific trading opportunity that you're trading as to whether or not you should add to a losing position or add to a winning position, or in some cases, as you'll see, do nothing. So let's go ahead and get into it again, just real quick. 
the three things are you can add to you can close the losing trade at a loss whatever you can hedge and you can then scale in and add to a losing trade those are the three things so if you just want to stop the video now that's it this whole thing if you want to see examples of this in real time you can follow now so let's say that you're on usd japanese yen and for whatever reason you just you think price is going to go up so you buy We'll represent a buy here with this little horizontal arrow here on the chart. So you buy right here. Now let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. We'll just click forward. So you happen to be right this time. You you have a resistance right there. So you say this might be a good place to take profit. We're on the one minute chart. This works on all time frames. That so you can use it on any time frame. So. Your idea is to take profit if it gets to that resistance zone. So you're holding the trade. It comes back to break even at one point, but you're still holding, seeing what will happen. And there we go. So it gets to the resistance. So now you've had one trade. You go to the resistance zone. You close at the resistance as planned. And that was it. So half the time what you'll notice is that you should be taking winners half the time. If you're not taking winners at least half the time, in my opinion, you're doing worse than the statistical probability of you just being blindfolded hitting buy and sell. Because like when you think about it, like the price goes up or down, right? That's all the Forex market does. And stocks and crypto, whatever else, or any other markets you could trade. Price goes up or down. There's only one of two things that can happen. And price is not going to go sideways forever in most circumstances, right? So it's usually either going to go up or down. And so it's a 50-50 chance from the moment you click enter, like whether you enter to a buy or sell, it's 50-50 chance whether it'll go up or down. So if, if you just if you handed your keyboard to a chimpanzee and just had it press one of two buttons, either a buy or sell, a chimpanzee averaged out over large numbers would have about a 50% win rate and a 50% loss rate. So the key here is, is how can we use this metric, 50% winning, 50% losing, to then make the winners a little bit bigger and then make the losses a little bit smaller? We can do that by learning how to fix losing trades. Winning trades are great. They go right to the profit target. Everything's fine and dandy. But losing trades, let's figure out how to solve them. So now that I've given you appropriate context and everything, let's, uh, let's look at this. So... Let's say now, you know, price is rejected this zone. So you think price is going to go down and I don't know. You think it's going to go in here. You, you identify this as maybe a support zone that you think price could go to. So you enter a sell. So you throw on a sell order and you, know, you just let it play out. So it plays around at break even for a while pushes back up into the resistance zone. So now essentially we have a losing trade. So what should we do now? Well, there's a couple things we can do. We have a losing trade of eight pips. Now we can either hedge, meaning we can just enter a buy order. So we'd be in a sell for, let's just say one standard lot. We could enter a buy for one standard lot and we would essentially be locking in the loss of seven pips. If it goes up and we're in a hedge, the buy would be profiting, but the sell would be losing. So it would just equal out and it would be locked in at around seven pips of loss, which at one standard lot, $70. Okay, so we could hedge. Second thing we could do is we could just close the trade here. Seven pip loss, whatever. You know, not bad that we just made a uh, 23 pip gain. So seven pip loss would still be in profit on the day, whatever. The third thing we could do is we could add to a losing position. So let's let's go through these three things and let's see what makes the most sense. OK, so ignoring the current positions that we're in, let's look at what the market's actually doing right here. So we entered down here thinking that price would move from this resistance level lower. Right. So if we think that this is still going to occur, then Price has just come back into the resistance zone. And as long as it doesn't break above it, the trading idea of it bouncing away from the resistance zone is still valid. So meaning we would still think that it's going down right now. We'd still be kind of convinced like, yeah, it could still go down. I mean, yeah, it's retesting the resistance. and 
but you know but it has a broken above so it's still valid like if i'd entered up in here you know it was a break even i wouldn't really be worried i would just be like yeah we'll see what happens if it breaks above then you know i'm gonna start being worried but for now perfectly fine no problem so we have this resistance here we think price is going to bounce off of it how can we make a trading decision that reflects what our belief is about what is going to happen in the market so let's ask ourselves what our belief is right this exact moment while we're sitting here in drawdown are we convinced that price is going to break this resistance zone or is it going to reject the resistance zone and come back down well we can all have differing opinions but me personally unless it's physically like visually broken above the zone there's no reason to think that that it's going to be continuing up i mean it would first have to do that and then if it does that then we can talk about the evidence for price continuing up okay fair enough but for right now it hasn't broken above it yeah we pulled down made a higher low and now we're testing back above the zone but until we get a nice clean break above and it holds above there's no reason to think that in my opinion it's going to be continuing up so do we think it's still going to come down yes so if we still think it's going to come down because we're at a resistance zone um, and we think there's going to be more downside would it make sense to add here now here's the here's the little key here whenever you ask yourself this question of what do you think is going to actually happen ignore the fact that you're in a buy or a sell and ignore the fact that you're in a drawdown and look at the chart objectively with just peaceful emotions sip your tea or your kombucha and just relax and ask yourself what do you think is going to happen from here well if, it, if we think it's going to bounce as resistance we think it's going to come down and if we still believe that to be the case then we can add a sell position here in drawdown seven pips drawdown but still in drawdown so let's say we add another 1.0 standard lot position here now we'll have to take it forward candle by candle and see what happens and see what we're going to have to do there's only one of two things that can happen because the market is likely not going to go sideways forever the one of two things is that it can go up or it can go down it's that simple so price begins to move down then it moves up then it moves down and i'll just go ahead and extend this zone out just a little bit further so that we can uh, just let this play out so now we start to go up again so we're making higher highs and higher lows right here deep into the resistance zone let's see what happens so now one thing we should also notice is if we're in a 1.0 standard lot sell there and then a 1.0 standard lot sell down here our break even point is going to be right here in the middle What that means is that if price moves to that point, you will have one trade in profit and then one trade in loss, but they would both cancel each other out and you'd essentially be able to get out of the trade at no loss at all. So sometimes you can do that, but it all depends on what you think is actually going to play out. Just continue trading normally as you would. So are we still convinced price is going to be going down here from this resistance zone? Well, we are going sideways and that's not a great sign at all. My intuition tells me that price is actually going to be breaking above this zone and continuing to the upside. However, we don't have any visual evidence here on the chart yet that price is trying to break this zone yet. It could here in the next few candles or it could just reverse and dump off downwards. I don't know. I, I don't remember what happened here on September 1st. On this, I, wouldn't even, I wasn't even trading UJ on September 1st. So with this right here, we have to watch and see what will happen. So let's click it forward. So now price breaks above. So now what we can do is we can wait to see what happens on the retest. Sometimes price will not come back to retest and that's where we may have to exercise some hedging. However, in this case, price did come back to retest. So now we'll see if we bounce here on the retest. If we start to bounce, we can close one of these sell positions to minimize the risk. And then we can enter a hedge, which is a buy. We'll see what happens first, though. So it, it fails the retest. It does not bounce. So this looks like it was just a liquidity spike. Price just spiked above the zone, hit pending orders, and then just fell back down. So in this case, 
let's reanalyze. We're in two short positions. One of them is at break even and one of them is in profit. Now we ask ourselves, what do we think is going to happen? Like, do we think it's still going to go down or up? Well, me looking at this, yeah, I, I still think it's going to pull down. I mean, at least a little bit more. Like, like, yeah, at least a little bit more. So, if from my perspective, like, still find a hold. Yeah, we're in profit, we're in break even. So, if you were scared and you were fearful, you'd probably be closing right now because you're like, oh, I've got this position in profit, this one at break even. The losing trade has been fixed. Now let's just get out, right? Now we have this profit, and then we had a break even here. Or no, this was a profit too, because it would be profitable from here to here of seven pips, and then that would be break even. So, but if we think it's still going to go down, we should just trade normally. So let's just hold it and we'll see what happens. So price continues down and it keeps going. So now we have to start asking ourselves where we want to take profit at. So we could take profit right here. We're also, we also have a support level right here that price is testing. So in this case, since we're in two positions and it ended up working out, we ended up having this trade be a winner. Um, in this case, I would say it would probably be safer just to close right here here at this support zone. And if you didn't close right here at this zone, then for sure here at the next support zone. So let's just say that we close right here. We're in profit. We'll let it play out. So it does end up reaching the support zone and it looks like it might be going, yeah, all the way to the next zone. So it went all the way to the next zone down there. So we closed, we were out with good profit. That was good. So now what you've just seen here is you've seen Number one, we could have closed the trade. That's fairly straightforward. People just put a stop loss and okay, stop loss is hit, whatever. So you close the trade. Second thing is hedging, which we haven't got to yet for an example. But the third thing is scaling in, adding to a losing position. That's what you've just seen here. The most important takeaway I want you to understand with adding to a losing position is you should only be adding to it if you believe that your original trading idea is still going to play out or if you believe that it is very likely that price is now going to bounce from the level you entered. You should never, ever, ever enter a losing trade on a scale in order, meaning you should not add to a losing trade if it's just random, like I'm in drawdown right here, 50 pips, so let me just add here and hope it bounces. You do not want to trade that way. You wanna be waiting for the next logical area where you believe price will bounce, if you entered a trade because it bounced off a resistance zone and then it just comes back to the resistance zone to test it, there's no reason to like switch your bias or get panicked or get FOMO and fearful. You should just, you know, either hold the original trade. Yeah, it's in some drawdown, but it hasn't been invalidated. The, the context and logic still makes sense. Well, haven't broken above the resistance. So sure, we can still bounce downwards. It's okay to hold the trade. Or you can just add to that losing position because now, hey, if you think, if you're really convinced it's still going to bounce from the resistance zone, like we just looked at here in the chart, then you can just add there at the resistance zone. Now you are assuming a little bit more risk by adding that second position, but you're adding in drawdown whenever it makes sense to do so. That's why I think that adding to losing positions gets such a bad rap because people think that it's just a horrible idea to add to your losers because it can turn into a crazy loss. The only time that's going to happen, though, is if you just keep mindlessly adding and adding and adding as it goes into drawdown with no plan, with no form of risk control, meaning how much position size and how much volume are you going to be using? And then where is your point where you're going to say, I'm either going to hedge or close all these at a loss. You have to have all that pre-planned. And if you're just entering because you're in drawdown, you're hoping, it, oh, it's got to pull back here. That's not a good way to add when you're in a losing position. Adding to a losing position, the second trade that you add should make sense in its own context and within its own reasons for you to add to that second position. It's based on its own merit, its own logic, its own context. And then if both of them play out, cool. If both of them start to lose, then you would manage that potentially with either a stop loss order, it's closing at a loss, or a hedge order. So let's see if we can get ourselves into a hedge order, okay? <clears throat> we'll go back to the charts. This will be our last example, then we'll be finished up here. So let's say that you think price is going to bounce at this zone. 
down here as support. So you wanted to buy right in here. But let's say you got a bad entry and you bought whenever it was already pushing up. So you have kind of a bad buy entry. So you're up here. So price pushes up. You want to take profits at the next resistance zone. So, okay, so it gets there. So now you have another profitable trade here at the resistance. So that's that. Again, if, if half your trades are not winning, again, you are you have a system in which you're performing crappier than you would as if you just blindly hit buy and sell. So with a 50% winning system, if 50% of your trades are little nice winners like this, like this one was like, what, like, you know, 25, 26 pips. The other one was similar to that one. You had a winning trade here for 22 pips on that entry and then another 16 pip winner here. Most of your trades should be winning. And the ones that you do not win should either be a small loss or a break even or a profit. And every now and then you'll take a big loss. You'll wipe out nice chunk of your profits. Maybe you've traded for a month, you've made like 50K. You have a bad losing day where you wipe out 10 to 20K. But in that case, hey, you still made 30, 40 grand. So whatever, you know, you're going to have your, lo your, your losses um, whenever stuff just runs the other way. So you, you develop this by experience and getting intuition and things like that. Um, so you have half, half your trades winners, half your trades losers with just the simplest like analysis. You don't have to use any crazy, ridiculous concepts. Support and resistance works fine. And support and resistance only works because it's a method of risk control. It's a method of saying, I'm going to enter here. And then if this happens, then I'll do this. Let's say I'll close my trade at a loss or I'll close my trade at a profit. I'll hedge, I'll scale in, you know, whatever. Support and resistance and technical analysis in general has no predictive form of benefit. It's just a way of controlling risk. So you don't need a complicated system. I trade just support and resistance. I teach all of this in the Mission FX full program and the Mission FX compounding course. And I trade live on my Instagram stories right now at the time of this video. All those links will be down in the description below if you'd like to check out any of those. So let's get into our last trade here. Hopefully it'll go against us so we can hedge. So let's say we sell here at the resistance end, right? So price rejects it, starts to bounce. We've closed our buy, we enter a sell ticket, it'll bounce. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully it spikes up above the zone and it goes against us. So it goes back into the zone. It's a break even. There we go. So price breaks above the zone. So now price is broken above the zone. And let's say up here at the worst price possible, right? You were afraid like, wow, okay. It's broken above the resistance zone. I don't know what to do. So here's what you could do. Your first option, close it at a loss, 15 pips. Okay, cool. You're still in profit on the session. So that could be an option. Second thing you could do is you could scale in, but do you think price is still likely to play out and come down? We could have a pullback from here to here, but if we're looking for any major zones, when we look immediately left, there's nothing here in no man's land. Maybe there might be on the one hour or four hour, but there's nothing recent that gives us a strong indication that, hey, we have a good reason to bounce here. If, if we bounce from here, it would just be luck because it's just pulling back to the zone then maybe it bounces their support and goes up. So here's what we can do. In this case, let's enter a hedge. So we're gonna enter a hedge right here and let's just say it's at the worst price. We enter a hedge, we panic once it goes up here. We, you don't panic, but you just, you're saying, all right, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna lock in this loss of 15 pips. So we're in a hedge order. A hedge order is a 1.0 standard lot buy in this case because we're in a 1.0 standard lot sell down here. So now we've locked in $170 worth of loss and we're gonna try to fix this losing trade somehow through the use of position management. So price is going up, keeps going up and it keeps on making higher highs and higher lows and kind of channeling upward here. So let's say that what you do is you add to this position here, you add a buy thinking that it's going to keep going up. So now for our first layer of positions, we have a buy and a sell right here, or I guess a sell on top and a buy on the bottom. Oops, sorry, a buy up here and then a sell on the bottom. So we have 
that first layer, and then we have a second trade based off its own merit, which is this buy right here. We think price is gonna keep ripping up from here, so we enter another buy. So we're in two standard lots long, and we're in a one standard lot short position, meaning that net overall, we are 1.0 standard lots long net here in the market. So let's see what happens. So now price pulls back. So now, essentially, we have a, a situation where in drawdown on this position, so this position is the only one that matters now, we're in seven pips of drawdown plus the 17 pip locked in loss from the buy and the sell. So now, let's ask ourselves, instead of getting panicked out and confused, oh, we're in three positions, what are we gonna do? Let's ask ourselves, what do we think is gonna happen? Well, at this point, we don't really know. So. It could keep going up, but it failed the structure, and it could keep going down, but there's no big resistance zone to think that it could go. So instead, let's close this one standard lot buy position right there. Now we're in a buy. We're at a worse price, but we're in a buy and then also a sell down here. So we're completely like uh, hedged out again. But instead of a 17 pip loss, we're now in a 21 pip loss hedged. But we've reduced our risk. We're no longer net long. We're not net short. We're just we're at a we're just hedged out. So it doesn't matter whether it goes up or down. We're not going to lose more money. We're not going to make more money. We're just completely hedged out at what I said, 21 pip loss. So $210. So now let's just wait for the next trading opportunity. And when the next trading opportunity presents itself, then we will either manage our open positions or we'll do that along with entering new positions. So we're using hedging right here. So now we push back up. So we're break even right here on this position. So well, not anymore. So we pushed up. So now we're breaking even. Another That's what I was waiting for. So we'll just say it was up there. So let's say it pushes up there. And let's say that from this resistance zone, we think that price is likely to pull back down here and maybe come and retest this zone down here. So let's say that from here, we have the idea of let's close our buy position at break even. So we get it at break even right there. We have the plan to hedge again at a buy position if price comes up there. But if that doesn't happen, then this resistance should play out and price should continue back here to the support level where we, we can then close this position around a break even. It'll probably end up being a little lost, but around a break even essentially. So now we've closed this buy position here. We have a buy stop order, or you can just have an alert and just enter a buy position if it breaks above, however we want to do it. But we have the plan to enter a buy order if it breaks above. So essentially, so price starts going back down initially, but we didn't come all the way here to the support level. So now we pushed up, so now we're hedged out again. But this time, instead of a 21 pip loss, it's now a 20, 22, 23 pip loss. So, all right. Now it comes back down. So let's see if we can pop back up here and retest this zone. So we did retest, but not really that deep. There we go, that was a nicer retest right there. So let's say that here, we think that, now if we're just ignoring all the positions, right? We're just ignoring that we're in a buy and a sell and everything, we're just ignoring that. We're saying, what do we think is actually gonna happen? Well, there is this resistance zone right here where price has been bouncing around at, and we just tried to get above and failed, and now we've been retesting it, we're testing it twice. So what do we think? Let's just say we think price is gonna go down. Okay, so this is our next trading opportunity. So now what we can do, we'll hold the hedge in place, we'll hold the buy there, but now we'll enter a sell right here. So we'll enter a sell right here on the retest of the zone. So now we're in a buy up here, we're in a short down here, and then we're in another short that we just entered. So we're net short 1.0 standard lots, thinking that this outcome is gonna play out. And if it does, we can get out of this position around break even, this position of profit, and we'll have one standard lot of a buy to figure out because well, that position will be in a loss. So it does play out. Let's wait for a little bit deeper of a test into the zone and if we get that, then we can, uh, we can close. So there we go. So we close this one around break even. This one is it's a little bit of a loss, but I mean, it's like, so four pips. So four pip loss. We close this in profit here, 15 pips. So 
it's about you know a 10 11 pip net profit but we have this buy position up here in drawdown don't we for 20 pips so now we have to figure out what we're going to do so let's ask ourselves what do we think is going to happen here well normally when a major resistance zone gets broken and price comes back to retest it there will normally be price bouncing there at the zone so if we can get another buy position somewhere here in this zone then if price can push up a little bit it can bring us to either a break even or even a profitable trade so what we should do is we should enter a buy position here if we believe that price is going to bounce here at this zone so now we've scaled into a losing position but we didn't do it randomly it still made contextual sense in the situation because we're at a resistance we broke above came back to retest we might bounce okay obviously we don't know it could fall straight through this zone like a rock we don't know but we think that it is likely enough to bounce that we can enter another buy position. So we've entered another buy position and it could push a little bit lower in here. So let's see. So price pushed up to that resistance zone. The break even point, since this is 20 pips, right? 18, 19 pips. So the break even points about pretty much where it came to right there. So. We'll just say, put this little thin zone in there. That's our break even point. Meaning if this, if price moves up to there, this position will be in profit and this position will be at a loss, but they'll cancel each other out and we fixed the losing trade. We'd be out of it at break even. Let's see if that actually occurs. So now price says it came up there. So we didn't close it right there. I was clicking trading view too quickly. Otherwise I probably would have said, let's just close it there, but coulda, shoulda, woulda. Let's say we would have done that, but we missed it for some reason. So now we're still in the losing trade and we have a second position losing. So what do we think is going to happen here? Do we think it's gonna go sideways? Probably not, probably go up or down. Do we think it's gonna go down? Well, maybe, but not yet. It's still, it's just testing deeper into the zone. Um, do we think it's going to go up? Well, yeah, I mean, at this current moment still, yeah, I mean, it's we still think it's going to go up just because there's no evidence that it's broken below the zone. So what we can do is we can enter another, a third buy position right here. We've brought our position average down to probably somewhere right in here because now we've got two standard lots here, one standard lot up here for a buy. So now if we could just bounce essentially this next zone, we'd probably get out in a profit, but we'd just call it break even. So... This is our essential break even point, which is 30% of the move up. And let's see what happens here. We need to monitor this third position though, because now that we're in three standard lots, if this goes against us, we need to have a plan for what we're going to do. So my plan for if this goes against us is to liquidate this last position here at a small loss and then hedge. So let's see how this plays out. So it bounced up initially, but then it pushed down here. So let's close that position at a loss of four pips. And then we will hedge and we'll hedge by entering two cells each for one standard lot. So we're two lots short, we're two lots long. The only reason you should be hedged is if you do not know what's going to happen. If, or sorry, if you do not believe what, if you don't have an assessment of what you think is likely to occur, because obviously nobody knows what's going to happen, right? It can go up or down but you should only hedge if you're uncertain about what could happen. If you have kind of a bias and you think like, yeah, I think we're gonna bounce from here, then get net long on the market. Manage your positions in such a way that whether you're closing, losing positions, or you're adding in new positions, make sure that you're, enter you're, you're positioning yourself in such a way that you can profit from whatever you believe is going to happen. Your beliefs about what's going to happen should match your trading behavior. So now we don't know what's gonna happen. It broke below the zone, it could fake out, come up, it could keep dumping down we're completely hedged out so you know it is what it is so we're in these two buys and we're in these two cells we've essentially locked in how much of a loss is this 24 pips there and then for this one six pips so like about 30 pips of a loss so still not that big of a deal so now it pushes back up so now what we can do is this could have ended up being a fake out. So we'll adjust the zone a little bit lower. We'll include that low. We'll wait for price to pull back down a little bit. Then we'll try to liquidate these cells. There we go. So we'll liquidate the sell orders right there at a small loss. This would be how many pips? 
So about three pips each, so about a six pip loss. So we took a small loss there. Um, four pip move down there, six pip loss here. So 10 pips of loss we took back here from these positions. And now we remain long right there, and then also still long up here, thinking that we're going to continue up. So now price pushes up. The break even point is a little bit past this. So what I'm gonna say is, for these two positions, the break even point would be like up here. So let's let that occur. All right, so our break even point was hit. At that point, if we chose to liquidate everything there, we liquidate the top buy position at a loss, but we also liquidate this position at a profit. So how do we know that this is actually a break even? That'll be a 10 pip profit, and this will be a nine pip loss. So a little bit of a profit, but essentially just a break even. So now let's figure out what happened, right? Because where did all this start? All of this started back here with the sell that we had that was a losing trade. Let's see if we were actually able to manage that loss accordingly. So it pushed way up here, and if we would have closed right there, it would have been a 16 pip loss. But instead, what happened? We entered a sell, a, a buy position up here. It pulled down, it pushed back up, we got it break even, so we lost nothing there. Pushed up above, we got into another buy position, pulled back down, we were able to profit on a sell position here. So that's a net profit right there of 15 pips minus four pips. So we'll just hit 15 minus five. We'll say it's a 10 pip profit there. We lost about 10 pips of profit through here from this buy and sell and the small losses there. And then we broke even on here. So in total net, we're completely flat now. We have no positions open, but through the use of hedging and scaling in, in this aspect, we use two of those mechanisms, hedging and scaling in. We were able to make a 10 pip profit there. We accepted a 10 pip loss here and everything else was break even. So 10 pip profit minus 10 pip losses break even. These two positions were break even. That position up there was break even. Everything was break even. So now what are we left with? We're only really left with our profits. So we're with a 24 pip profit there plus 23 plus 12. So we'll just call that like, a, call it like 35, I guess, just to be safe. And then 27, so 50 plus 35, so we're about 85 pips profit, net profit. And then in here, all of this was a pain in the butt, right? But we still broke even. So now we just, all you've had from this session from September 1st to September 2nd, you had an 85 pip profit. The beauty of fixing losing trades is that you don't even have to be right. If you become experienced and you learn how to manage losing position to the, to, through the use of closing losing trades at a loss using either a stop loss order or just closing manually, hedging, and also scaling into losing positions. You can use these things within the proper context in order to almost always come out at either a break even or a small loss or a small win on everything. Meaning most of your trades, if you have the suckiest win rate, literally 50%, literally you're blindly hitting buy and sell on the keyboard. 50% win rate. 50% of your trades are gonna be easy wins, sweet. And then if the other 50% of your trades, if most of those are just small wins, small losses or break evens, you never really have a big loss to wipe out most of the profits. You will have a big loss every now and then. And if you're trading very high risk and aggressively like I do with large position sizes, you run the risk of blowing the account. I'm a person earlier this week, I lost $20,000 on USDJPY ripping upwards and not stopping at all. The day after that, I made $28,000 back. And then today, I've made another $5,000. So I'm still in a net profit like 13K this week just for my position management and understanding how to manage positions that are losing and not playing out as I, as I thought they would. All of this stuff and more is taught within the Mission FX full program, the Mission FX compounding course, and I also show it live on my Instagram close friends stories list where I share all my analysis and trades that take on a daily basis. If you'd like to learn more information about all this and how you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching from my team and I here at Mission FX, hit the links in the description, check out which product you think will work best for you, get on a phone call with our team, see if Mission FX is a good fit for you, and I hope to see you inside. Hope this video was useful. If it was, good. I'm glad it helped you.
Have a great rest of the day.